Hey guys, welcome to another Friday video. Today we're putting together a Windows 98 retro gaming PC using the Athlon 64 platform, specifically Socket 754. So typically this platform is more for Windows XP retro gaming, but if you have watched a few of my videos, unless you've got one of the very high-end Athlon 64 processors, at least in my opinion, that platform is not quite powerful enough for some of the more demanding games like Far Cry, for example. So instead of building a high-end Athlon 64, and also spending quite a significant amount of money on some of the more expensive and more desirable parts, why not just go for a really average Athlon 64 or Sempron system using the 754 platform and use it for a Windows 98 retro gaming PC. And you can use the same approach with Windows XP. For example, go with a Core 2 system or an i5 or an i3 system for Windows XP retro gaming. So this is what this project is about. Now, um, a lot of things actually went wrong in this video, but I managed to figure out what was going on. So this might actually be of interest and it might save you a lot of time if you want to put together such a system for Windows 98. So this is the main board and processor that I've used in this project. It is from Gigabyte. It is the K8VM800M and the revision is 2.0. So this is a micro ADX motherboard with a chipset from VIA. So the main chipset here is the VIA K8M800, which has integrated graphics um, via S3G Unichrome 2 to be precise, but it has an AGP 8X slot. So we will later upgrade a dedicated graphics card and we will compare, is the onboard video card enough for Windows 98 retro gaming or do you really need to use a dedicated video card? The South Bridge here, we've got the VIA 8237R Plus. And apart from that, it has everything we need. We have two RAM slots, two ID controllers here. There are two SATA ports, and I did run into some issues to do with these ports, and we will come back to those later. We also have three PCI slots, so uh, a dedicated sound card is a prime candidate for installation. Now, in terms of RAM, 512 megabytes is the maximum limit that Windows 98 supports out of the box. Initially, I used two 256 megabyte RAM modules. That was a mistake. I forgot that this platform is not dual channel. So this is socket 754, only has a single channel support. So using two 256 memory modules, it's not gonna give you any speed benefit. Um, my thinking was because it's got onboard graphics, I want to make sure I'm using dual channel, but that was a mistake. So a single RAM stick is all you need. And in terms of the CPU, again, it really doesn't matter. You can pick the lowest Athlon 64 or Sempron. Uh, you can even go into the BIOS and change the multiplayer, clock it down. I'm going with a Sempron 3100 plus, and I believe it runs at 1.8 gigahertz. And as you will find out later in this video, this CPU is extremely powerful to drive even the uh, most high-end Windows 98 video cards. If it has a BIOS, we're gonna flash it. So I had a look on the Gigabyte website. The latest BIOS version is FD from 2005, December, and it was already flashed when I've got this main board. This is a Gigabyte main board. You need to press Control F1 to unlock some hidden BIOS options, especially to do with overclocking and frequency, that sort of stuff. So whenever you have a Gigabyte board and you're in the BIOS, press Control F1 and usually it will unlock a few hidden BIOS settings. In the BIOS, I load the BIOS defaults and I usually disable onboard devices that I don't need. For example, if you're using PS2 keyboard and mouse, you can disable the USB controller. Um, I also turn off the serial and the parallel ports, little things like that, just to free up a few resources which can help with Windows 98. And another cool thing about this platform is you can use modern AMD CPU coolers because they all use the same mounting mechanism. So you can use a modern AMD Rave cooler and stick it on a AMD Socket 754 platform, which is really, really cool. 
The power supply we're using today is from Corsair, it's the VS350. I like using this power supply, it's got enough power for this system. Unfortunately, I didn't plug in my power meter, so I don't have any power consumption figures, but they should be fairly low, uh, maybe 100 watts or something like that, nothing too fancy. And this power supply has all the legacy ports, the Molex connectors, the floppy connector and all of that, as well as SATA connectors, so you don't need to use any adapters. So let's talk about the Windows 98 installation. Initially, I started off with an 80 gigabyte SATA hard drive connected to the SATA zero port. And we've got an ID optical drive connected to the secondary ID channel configured as a master device. I then went into the BIOS and actually disabled the primary ID controller because we don't need that. And yep, both devices show up just fine and I was able to install Windows 98. So if you need a copy of Windows 98, you can go to the WinWorld website, download the OEM version. That one has a bootable ISO image that you can just burn onto a, a CD and then boot from it. Now, I also created myself a answer, an automatic answer file, so it will speed up the installation. Basically, it's like a script. The only manual input I need to do is confirm the license key. But yeah, if you wanna learn how to create such an answer file, I've done a video tutorial on that, and I will put a card on the top right-hand corner of the screen. Unfortunately, during the Windows 98 installation, the machine froze twice. The first freeze was during the Windows 98 is now setting up your hardware and plug and play devices. And yeah, I had to reset the machine. It then reboots and I got another freeze during the setting up hardware stage. So I reset the machine twice and after that the installation continued just fine. So that is unusual. Um, I haven't really noticed uh, that on other machines to be honest and I did try a few different hard drives and I repeated the process a few times and it um, got stuck at exactly the same points and that usually tells me it's not an issue with like a dodgy disk or maybe the ribbon cable. It's usually something about the hardware that the Windows 98 installation can't handle. But anyway, Windows 98 was installed. I then uh, installed the drivers. So I got the chipset drivers from the Gigabyte website. Those are the VIA 4-in-1 version 4.55. All the default options, restarting the machine, and that worked fine. Next up, I installed the graphics drivers. I put uh, on the screen what version it is. And after that, we have the Realtek Audio Drivers 3.92 also from the Gigabot website. Now the graphics drivers, uh, the drivers on the Gigabot website are indeed the latest versions. They match with what's on the VIA website. And finally, I installed DirectX 8.2 and also the VIA Ethernet driver 6103, just to make sure that the Ethernet controller works. When I then checked in Device Manager, I could see there are some issues with the storage devices. I did try a few BIOS settings and also different drivers, but I just couldn't get rid of that exclamation mark. But because the machine was otherwise appearing to work fine, I proceeded with running a few benchmarks. So first I wanted to see what the performance was like with the integrated graphics. So in 3 Mark 99 Max, it is capped at 30 FPS. So that tells me that likely VSync is engaged. So usually I use PowerStrip. Uh, this is a tool which can usually let you access certain driver options. And here you can um, sometimes disable VSync. But with this uh, video card, uh, there are no options to change anything. So yeah, there might be another tool that's out there, but wasn't really worth spending a lot of time looking into that. In 3D Mark 2000, this one doesn't have a VSync issue. Performance is average. We're getting 3,172 3D Marks, which is quite low. I then tried a few games. Here we have Incoming running at 1024 by 768. We once again have a 30 FPS cap. So once again, VSync is very likely engaged. And I also noticed that the sky textures, they seem unfiltered and very blocky. I also ran GL Quake that runs at 36.5 FPS at 1024 by 768. So also not really decent performance. And 
Then when I ran the DartX diagnostic utility, the machine locked up. And at that point, it was ready to uh, install a dedicated graphics card and a sound card and see what this machine can really do. So this is the video card we're using. It's quite a popular choice for those looking for high-end performance under Windows 98. It's a GeForce 4 Ti4200. And this version is from Medion. It comes out of Germany. Aldi used to uh, install these video cards in their PCs. And yeah, otherwise, it's got dual VGA outputs, uh, the usual TV in and out connectors, and yep, fairly standard HEP video card. So with NVIDIA cards and Windows 98, I usually choose between two drivers. For most of the GeForce cards, I use the 4523 driver. But if it's a GeForce FX, I go with the 5664. But neither of these drivers would install. The setup was unable to locate any NVIDIA graphics chips on this system. So that was very weird. So the workaround that I usually apply in such cases is you go into the device manager and you manually um, install the driver by pointing to the extracted driver files, which are sitting on the hard drive. And yep, so I manually uh, forced or installed the 4523 graphics driver. And this is the sound card. Once again, we're using the Turtle Beach Santa Cruz with the Crystal CS4630 chip. Decent sound card, very quiet, good sound quality, supports EAX and A3D. And if you spot one for a decent price, definitely pick it up. Um, the drivers are also very uh, straightforward to install. We have driver version 4081. And so far, very good compatibility with all the games I've tried. Unfortunately, things didn't go very smooth. Trying incoming, uh, I got an error message, create direct 3D device failed. And then also when I ran the DirectX diagnostic, it gave me an error when trying to run the direct 3D tests. So I then went back to the device manager and I manually installed the newer 5664 drivers and that did the trick. Also, you need to install the cool bits registry tweaks to unlock all the vSync controls and also overclocking if you're interested in that. So now let's have a look at the performance and how the integrated graphics compares to using GeForce 4. So 99 Max, we're getting now 11,804. And in 3D Mark 2000, we're getting 11,942 3D marks and 39,684 CPU marks. Incoming at 1024 by 768, we're getting 193 FPS. GL Quake at 1024 by 768, we're getting 230 FPS. I then ran a few games at different resolutions just to see if we have a CPU or a GPU bottleneck. And we can clearly see that the video card is what's holding things back. Here we have GL Quake. Moving on to Quake 2, we can also see a decline of performance as we ramp up the resolution. Quake 3, we can see the same thing. And here we also have Expendable. Um, still up to 1600 by 1200, we're getting well over 60 FPS. The only game that struggles to hit the 60 FPS at 1600 by 1200 is Draken. Now, because that Medion GeForce had trouble with installing the drivers, I wanted to be double sure, so I used an even faster GeForce 4. This is the 4600, which is the top model with the highest clock speeds. And I've also installed a custom uh, GPU cooler. You can get these uh, for a very low price uh, from Asian suppliers. And they do a fantastic job. A lot of my video cards I have upgraded with this cooling solution. So here the 4523 driver installed just fine. So let's have a look at the difference. And the improvement in performance is outstanding. It's a little bit too good. Um, it shouldn't be that good, to be honest. Um, the GeForce 4 uh, TI 4600 is just clocked um, somewhat higher. It doesn't really have any more shaders, but you can see the boost in performance here in GL Quake, in Quake 2 as well. Expendable, we're getting now, uh, well, yeah, 160 FPS at 1600 by 1200. And even in Draken, we're now getting 94 FPS at 1600 by 1200. So now we really have outstanding performance. And basically, any Windows 98 era game you throw at this machine, you should get extremely playable frame rates, even at the highest resolution. 
Now remember that the Windows 98 installation initially hung twice and we also had uh, some issues in Device Manager. So that really bugged me and I wanted to get to the bottom of this uh, because it's not really something I want to recommend. If there are issues, I uh, do want to get to the bottom and want to have a smooth installation before I can really recommend something. So I had a hunch that it might have to do something with the SATA storage controller. So I'm using now a 80 gigabyte ID hard drive connected to the primary ID channel and the optical drive is still connected to the secondary ID channel. Both are configured as master devices and I went into the BIOS and disabled the SATA controller altogether. And lo and behold, the Windows 98 installation now proceeded without any uh, hangs and also in device manager after installing the gypsy drivers and the video drivers and everything everything was fine so no conflicts anymore so yeah if you're going for now this might be different for each motherboard the way they implemented the SATA, implemented the SATA controller might be different but if you're having any issues or if you want to avoid any issues altogether stick with the IDE controllers they've been around for a lot longer they are tried and tested Disable this other controller and just either use an ID hard drive uh, or use one of these ID to SATA converters. And at this stage, I wanted to have a quick look at a few games. So first up, we have Tomb Raider 2 running at 1600 by 1200. Um, and this game is capped at 30 FPS. So you can actually play around with the anti-aliasing and anisotropic filtering options of the GeForce 4 to make it look even nicer. Unreal Tournament, this runs at 1024 by 768 We're getting well over 100 FPS, so very playable. Next up, I had a look at Dungeon Keeper 2. This game also runs at 1024 by 768 Once again, well over 100 FPS. The scrolling was a little bit too fast, so in that case, you might actually want to go into the BIOS and slow down the CPU by downclocking the multiplier. Um, that's an option you have at your disposal. And I also had a look at Blood 2. 1024 by 768, once again, well over 100 FPS. So you get the idea. This is a really high performing system for Windows 98. Um, and uh, it should be able to run any of the games that you throw at it. So guys, a lot went wrong, but in the end, I was able to figure out what was going on. So um, yes, I can recommend Socket 754 for Windows 98 retro gaming. Personally, I really like the VIA chipsets. I know um, that recommendation might be a little bit controversial, but I always have had good experiences with VIA chipset uh, main boards. So yeah, it doesn't have to be high-end. It can be a really no thrills basic micro ATX main board. Pick the cheapest Athlon 64 or Sampron processor that you can find. If it runs at 1.2 or 1.8 gigahertz, it's not going to make any difference for the games that we looked at. Uh, single channel memory, so a single stick of RAM, 256 megabytes is all you need. The um, tip with the storage controllers, stick with ID. The SATA controllers might be causing issues, that did in my case, so to avoid any issues, stick with ID. GeForce 4, outstanding performance, this is a DirectX 8 class uh, GPU, but most of the games that we looked at today, I believe, actually don't need DirectX 8. So it really is an overkill GPU, which means you can run very high frame rates and very high resolutions. And the Turtle Beach Santa Cruz, once again, delivered on the expectation. It's a really good sound card. It sounds good and it's also very compatible. So, yeah. Excellent performance from the processor. It can drive really high-end video cards. The parts should be affordable because you can pick up, yeah, you don't need a high-end Enforce uh, fancy mainboard, just something basic. And people, a lot of people have a poor opinion about VIA chipsets, so you might be able to get these boards for a good price. The CPU should be cheap. DDR memory should be cheap. GeForce 4 also shouldn't be too hard to find. With the sound cards, you have options. For example, a Sound Blaster Life is a classic choice, and Oriel Vortex 2, or the Turtle Beach Santa Cruz. And this is a great system to pair up with a high-end video card for high-resolution gaming. It's also low noise, low power. You can use modern ATX power supplies because we've got the 12-volt ATX CPU connector right here. And yeah, so yes, 
this is a platform I can definitely recommend. Um, the type of games you want to play might uh, determine which GPU you will go for. Now, I have planned a bonus video where we're going to look at DOS gaming. So we are basically going even further back in time. So that would be interesting. Um, I'm a huge fan of uh, DOS games and we will see if we can get sound working and all of that. But today the topic was Windows 98. And as always, guys, do let me know what you think. Are you using an Athlon 64 or Sampron processor for Windows 98 retro gaming? If not, um, what do you think? Is that something that you might consider? Especially when I look at um, uh, Socket A platforms and the difficulties with getting a compatible power supply. Um, have a look at the Athlon 64 platform. It is compatible with Windows 98. The manufacturer websites, they have official Windows 98 drivers, so it's officially supported and performance can be, uh, yeah, is outstanding. Even a weak CPU like the Sempron 3100 uh, delivers 100 plus FPS in most of the games. So guys, there you have it. Let me know what you think of this project. Leave your comments down below. I read every comment. You might not get a reply, but I do read every single comment. If you have any interesting video suggestions, also leave them down below. Always eager to hear from you. If you found the video useful, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Give it a like, share the video with your friends, and I shall see you soon with another one.